Hello, we are studying Native American culture and the way art reflects that culture this week in the art room. Today I'm going to be showing you a nice little low stress, low mess way to create some cute little sand paintings like this. This is geared for kind of beginner level, early elementary age. Alright, we're going to start by placing um, just a, a nice piece of construction paper underneath our workspace. This is very important to keep our area nice and tidy and low on the mess. Now I'm going to go ahead and start with a, a sketch that I've done just on some cardstock paper here. I'm going to do a little eagle um, and we're going to just be using regular liquid glue and then I've got this colored sand that I got from nasco.com but you can find this at pretty much any little craft supply store there is. Okay so um, we're going to begin by filling in just one area at a time with the glue. You can see that I'm going to use the tip of the glue to my advantage, but I don't want so much on here that it gets drippy. So right now, you can, might be able to see that there's a few little gaps in there. So I'm going to be using this little wooden tool. Um, this is some that our cafeteria ladies gave me that's usually used to eat ice cream with, but you could do the same thing with a popsicle stick or even the tip of a pencil if you're working on something at home. We're going to gently fill in this area. And you want to make sure that your glue goes all the way to the edges of your pencil lines. If your glue does not go there, the sand will not go there. So try to keep that in mind. The cleaner you keep your glue at this point, the easier your life will be in a little bit. Alright, so now let's say I want to make that this nice little turquoise blue. I'm not going to sit here and just dump that whole thing on there because that's going to make a big mess. Instead, I'm going to pinch and sprinkle. Pinch and sprinkle. That way I don't make quite so much of a mess doesn't get all over the place and I have a little bit more control. Let's say I had a little bit of wet glue somewhere else that I didn't want this to go. Okay, so you can see that I just covered the area right there like that. I'm going to give it a little shake to make sure that it covers all sides of my glue. And then just tap it off onto the construction paper down below. Now you can see that that filled in that space nicely. Now this that's left, every single time I do that, I'm going to bring that jar of sand back up here and I'm going to dump it right back in because we are not going to be wasteful just like the Native Americans weren't very wasteful whenever they killed a buffalo they used every single part there was. Alright so let me go ahead and show you another piece or two just like that so you can kind of get the idea. Now I'm using this craft supply sand but if you're feeling adventurous, you could go find your own sand naturally, the way it comes right out of the ground. In fact, that's what most Native American artists who are creating sand paintings actually do. They don't use this dyed sand like what I'm using today. They go out to different areas and they find different colored sand. One time I was hiking down in the Wichita Mountains in south, southwestern Oklahoma and I found some beautiful black sparkly sand. In fact, it looked a lot like this, just natural on the ground. I was walking amongst some trees and I just saw some sand just like this and it blew my mind. I picked it up, I put it in a water bottle. I thought, ooh, I gotta do something with that someday. Not sure what I did with it. I'll have to go back hiking down there, I guess. All right, you can see that that filled in nicely as well. And remember, every single time you wanna dump it right back into the jar. If you forget, and you end up mixing two different colors, don't dump it back into the jar because then it'll be contaminated. Um, I usually keep a separate jar for mixed sand because sometimes that's fun to use, but, um, but for the most part you want to make sure you do that every single time. Alright, so I want to show you some finished ones again. That's, that's how we do it, but you could maybe try your hand at a dream catcher a simple landscape. You want to keep your designs really simple on something like this, especially if you're just starting out. Um, and, and usually Native American art is pretty abstract anyway, so keep that in mind as you work. Here's a medicine wheel. Each one of these colors represents um, a, different, a different symbol. It could be the four directions, it could be the four stages of man, um, the four elements of the earth. You know, it's a pretty common symbol that you see in Native American art. So anyways, that's the low stress, low mess way to do a sand painting.